Why can't we be that determined when it comes to our healing? When it comes to our finances, when it comes to the resources that we need for whatever it is. Sure got quiet here in this Presbyterian church. All things are possible to the believer. All things are possible to the believer. Is there anything not included in the all? all the original all Greek word for all means all. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even study the Greek and I know that. <laughs> all things are possible. All right, open your Bibles tonight to the book of Hebrews. I want to pick up uh, where we left off on Sunday morning. Wasn't that exciting, learning about see it and receive it? If you can see it, you can receive it. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Billy, I th let's bring up slide number one. I think it has Hebrews 11.1. In the Living Bible, uh, this is one of my favorite. And um, can the people at home see it on, like, on Facebook and on uh, on uh, YouTube? Can can they see it? Uh, so maybe, uh, Kevin, are you on the? Maybe every once in a while, just pan over, grab the screen, bring it back, so people can see this. But in the in the Living Bible, read this out loud with me, okay? What? is faith. It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Now, remember, we talked about Sunday. There's two different kinds of seeing in the Bible. You have the seeing with the natural eye, and that's what's referenced here in Hebrews 11.1. 1. But we have a supernatural seeing, and I've kind of used the term a supernatural imagination or a divine imagination, or I've heard it called a sanctified imagination. How many think sanctified imagination? That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? If you can see it, when you're reading a scripture, maybe a scripture that you've read a hundred times, but you're seeing the scripture for the first time, how many of that's happened to you? That's the kind of seeing that we're talking about. If we can see it, we can receive it. Now, by faith, I think it's slide number three, Billy. By faith, by believing in God, we all know that Christ's burial, Christ's uh, death, his burial, his resurrection, it saves us from our sins. We all believe that. Amen? How many believe beyond any shadow of a doubt if you died today, you'd go to heaven? You believe that. How many of you ever even imagined what it would be like to walk into heaven? Amen? Amen. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Can we, by faith, imagine our bills being paid? Our body being healed. A broken relationship being mended. A loved one be, becoming born again. Can we see it with eyes of faith? Now, here's what's interesting about this. 
We can see the negative. We hear about a situation, we read about a situation, somebody shares a situation with us, and we can see the negative. When something happens, when you get that phone call, when you get that information, our mind literally begins rehearsing the negative. Why can't we sanctify our imagination to rehearse the positive? The, the uh, results that we desire. Put slide one back up there, Billy. Look, look at the last phrase of this. The certainty, say certainty, that what we hope for, what we have our sanctified imagination for, is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Have you heard that story about this man every day at 520 he came home from work 520 his wife could almost set her watch 520 521 maximum he was rarely ever late 520 on the dot he'd come walking in the door carrying his briefcase honey I'm home one day at 530 he hadn't showed up yet She's, well, that's a little strange. He's he's always on time. 540. What is he doing? Where is he? Oh, I wonder if he's had a car accident. I wonder if he's in the hospital. He's dying someplace right now. No, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He'll call me any minute. And she's staring at the phone. And okay, he's okay. Okay. Six o'clock. She's starting to freak out. She's even called the police station. My husband is missing. I don't know where he's at. How long's he been gone? Forty minutes. <laughs> Click. They hang up on you. You know. <laughs> Ladies, got to be gone twenty-four hours. We know before we do anything about it. 620, I know where he's at. He's with that hussy, that new secretary down there at the job. That's where he is. Why is it that we always go down the negative? 630, he comes bouncing in. She says, boy, you better have a good explanation because I was about to kill you. (laughs) He said, whoa. Whoa said, I'm so sorry I couldn't call you. The boss brought me into his office. He just gave me a big bonus. He gave me a raise and I got a promotion. (laughs) You see, why do we go to the negative? Why can't we imagine getting the phone call from the bank that says, we got too much money in here. You're going to have to find another bank. Because you know you get more than 250000 in there, you got to find another account. How many receive that? Glory to God. Uh, Jan and I put a deposit in, in our personal account yesterday. It didn't show up. So this morning, we got up bright and early and went down to the bank and said, hey, we put that money in the bank yesterday. It didn't show up. And they said, no, it's here. We don't know why it's not on your, the phone app, but it's here. And they showed it to her and so forth. But wouldn't it be exciting if all of a sudden they said, wow, uh, not only is your deposit here, but here's another extra 500000 Praise the Lord. Come on. Now. I'm, I'm being ridiculous, but think about it. How many times have we thought the ridiculous in the negative? What if we could sanctify our imagination when we pray, see the person healed? 
see them healed. Uh, someone just handed me, uh, they just uh, emailed me a YouTube from uh, CBN Broadcasting. They were doing a testimony of this young girl who was born with cerebral palsy. And by the time she was like 21, she was having violent seizures that literally would break her limbs. We're talking serious. They send her to one of the absolute top therapy places in the whole nation. And they, she's getting worse. She's not getting any better. She's got about 10 more days in that place. And they're just going to give up on her, send her to a nursing home. And Jesus gives her a vision. In a vision, she sees Jesus, uh, uh, she sees a man in a pinstripe suit walking into her hospital room at this therapy center. She sees a man in a pinstripe suit in this vision, and he walks over to her and he heals her when he prays for her. And she is so excited. And she can barely talk now. Her, her jaw is fixed. Her body is contorted. So she calls the nurse over and she says, I've got to find that church. There's a pastor. He's wearing a pinstripe suit. So she's going through the yellow pages. Looking for a church. And her eyes are drawn to this open Bible church ad in the yellow I mean who even looks in the yellow pages anymore and she says call that one and the nurse explains to the church this lady would really like your pastor to come and pray for her in our hospital or therapy place and he walks in the door in the pinstripe suit that she saw in the vision <laughs> And she explains the whole story to him. And so he says, okay. And they made arrangements. They called several elders from the church. And the, they bring her to the church, anoint her with oil. And, and she's sitting there in her wheelchair. And they just pray. They've never done a miracle like this. They've never done one. I mean, they've prayed for people. But they didn't know what to expect. And so he just, the thought came to him after they prayed for her. He said, would you, would you like to just stand? So they move the foot pedals and they help her. And as they lift her up, she feels strength going into her legs. And she had not been able to stand for years. So she's standing there and her body's all twisted and she's still shaking and everything. And they said, just try and walk. And so she moves one foot about an inch and the other one another inch. And within 30 minutes, she's running around the sanctuary. Come on, praise God. If you can see it. Now, in her case, she had a vision of her being healed. But can we not do that? Can I tell you when I've stood before crowds overseas and maybe in my hotel room before I leave for the open air crusade or something, I, I use my sanctified imagination and I see myself giving the altar call and seeing people come to the altar and seeing people getting healed and stepping out of wheelchairs. That's what I try to do. Now, I have to be honest with you, I've never seen exactly in the daydream, so to speak, the sanctified imagination, I've never seen it happen exactly the way I've imagined, but for sure I've seen it happen. Am I communicating? Yes. Why can't we learn to see it and receive it? We're going to talk about it. 
a little bit more here because I want it to get down in my spirit too. I'm a little selfish tonight. I want it too in, in my way. Uh, slide number six, Billy. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I, I, this is one of the first scriptures I ever mem- memorized was John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become a son of God, even them that believe on his name. Notice the wording. Those that believed, those that received Christ, he then gives them the power to become. A lot of times, and you've seen it happen, you've witnessed to somebody or maybe you've led somebody to the Lord. How many have led a total heathen to the Lord? I mean, somebody had no concept of salvation or anything. You've led them to the Lord. And they say, okay, just repeat after me. And they said, repeat what? I'm going to pray a little prayer with you. We're going to ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins and come into our heart. Okay. You know, they're, they're just not into it, you know. So, now, just pray this from your heart. What does that mean? They don't even know what that means. But you can watch them. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And then all of a sudden you watch. And that little tear starts coming down their eyes. And they are transformed right in front of you. What just happened? They became a new creature inside. Old things are passed away. All things become new. They received the power of transformation. Now, what if we apply that principle when we pray? Why not lay hands on somebody and see the miracle, before it happens. See it. What have we got to lose? How many have ever had to fight your brain that says, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work? I'm telling you, some of you have heard me tell the story. One of our elders in our church, and um, uh, Tony... I think it was Williams, Jan. What was his wife's name? Sandra. Sandra, Tony calls me on a Saturday night, and he says, Pastor, I, they're, they're telling me Sandra's not going to live through the night. She's in ICU. She's not going to live through the night. She's probably at the time maybe 40 years old. I think she was a school teacher who specialized in teaching uh, phonics. And the Lord had even given her a special way to teach phonics. And she was being used throughout Polk County to teach other teachers how to teach their children phonics. And here she is, 40 years of age, dying with some kind of virus or something in her body. So I go down to the hospital, and I tell you, when I walked in the room, Tony is standing there looking at me like this with one of his, like, 10-year-old kids with him, And he's looking at me like, please, pastor, do something, please. And he's just looking at me. There's no hope in his eyes at all. And I have to tell you, when I looked at Sandra with tubes up her nose, tubes in her arms, laying there lifeless on that bed, I'm thinking to myself, I need to do the last rites. I mean, seriously, I didn't even have faith. But I've learned, faith it till you make it. (laughs) I didn't say fake it, Glenda. I said faith it. Faith it. Just declare what the Word of God says. And I laid hands on her lifeless body and just said, Jesus, please give us a miracle. Now, I wish I could tell you that I could see her coming up out of that bed I couldn't but how many thank God for the mercy of God that still listens to your prayers when you don't have faith Sunday morning 
at 9 a.m., I looked at my phone. He had not called me during the night. So I called him. And I said, Tony, what's happening with Sandra? He says, oh, she's sitting up here in the bed eating some jello. Do you want to talk to her? Praise God. Ha! Shanda bakarata. Why do we see the negative? Why can't, I wish I could tell you that I saw her alive, but I, I didn't. But how about we ask God to sanctify our imagination to see the miracle? Amen? You have to have faith in what the word of God is saying. Just like we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ died for our sins, our sins are forgiven. We're washed clean. Is there any sin too hard for God? Is there any sin that is left a stain that his blood won't get out? Now, we believe that by faith, but the same Bible says, by his stripes we're healed. The same Bible says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches. The same Bible says, all things are possible to him that believes. Amen? Tell your neighbor, it's the same Bible. Same Bible. Come on. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9. Verse 23, it's uh, slide number uh, 16, Billy, slide number 16. And, and I just want to review this one scripture with you. This is one I gave you Sunday morning. This is the story of the man who brings his child to Jesus, and he has epilepsy, and the child's being thrown into the fire and into the water to kill him, right? Everybody know, remember that story? Notice the words here in the Passion Translation. The man brings his boy to Jesus, and remember the disciples couldn't heal him, so now he brings the boy to Jesus. Master, if you're able to do something, anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus says these words, what do you mean if? What do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? You know, you could almost play that verse any way. You could could say that Jesus was indignant with him, but you know that wouldn't be Christ-like and according to his character. But yet, yet, didn't he say to the woman, the Canaanite woman, why should I give the children's bread to a dog? Didn't he say that? Now, he didn't do it with a rudeness or a crudeness, I don't feel. I feel like he was almost making a point. Because everybody in the room thought she was a dog. Right? They were Jews. They, they felt like they were above everybody else. And so he, he said... Um, You know, why should I give the children's bread to a dog? And he's saying that to play to the crowd that was in the room. She says, but master, even the little dogs, the little puppies eat from their master's table. And wow, what an impact. Well, here you have a man who's saying... If there's anything you can do to help us. And Jesus says, what do you mean, if I can? Put the scripture up there, Billy. Look at what it says. If you're able to believe. If you're able to believe. If you're able to believe. All things are possible to the believer. Are we not all called believers? Because we believe. The world is trying to tell us evolution. And we go, 
You're out of your tree, man. God created the heaven and earth. We believe, right? Yeah, but the Big Bang Theory and all that kind of stuff. And look, we got, we got dinosaur eggs that are a million years old and everything else. And you go, look, I don't know all of that. All I know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I'm a believer. Amen. Right? Amen. Why can't we be that determined when it comes to our healing? when it comes to our finances, when it comes to the resources that we need for whatever it is. Sure got quiet here in this Presbyterian church. All things are possible to the believer. All things are possible to the believer. Is there anything not included in the all? all the original all Greek word for all means all. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even study the Greek and I know that. All things are possible. Uh, give me uh, slide number 19, Billy. This is the story of the two blind men. And I want to show you this scripture again. The two blind men that followed Jesus into the house where he was teaching. And Jesus says, do you believe that I have the power to restore sight to your eyes? Do you believe that? Do I have the power to restore sight to your eyes? I'm asking you tonight, does he have the power to pay your electric bill that you're behind in? Does he have the power to get you the new car, transportation that you need? Does he have the power to get you the new home that you need because you're maybe in a bad neighborhood? Does he have the power to help you with your child's school bill? Does he have the power to do it? How many would say, yeah, he's got the power to do it. Yes. Now put it back up there, Billy. What does it say? Yes, Lord, we believe. And Jesus puts his hands over their eyes. Now this is in the New Passion Translation. This is where Dr. Brian uh, Simmons has studied this out. And in the Greek and the Aramaic, when Jesus is actually talking, how many have a red letter edition? It's in the red, right? When you see red lettering in your Bible, that means it's in Aramaic, not Greek, Aramaic. And Dr. Simmons, he has studied the Greek and the Aramaic. And he says, in the Aramaic, Jesus said exactly, you will have what your faith expects. Did you know the book of Proverbs says you'll have what your fear expects? Other scriptures say you'll have what you say. If you speak to the mountain and you tell the mountain, go be cast into the sea, it shall be done. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart, we shall be saved. I saw uh, Bill Winston do this illustration today. Is that a Bible right there? Is that right here? Is that your Bible? Can I borrow it? Okay. What we're going to do is I want you to watch real carefully. We're going to have the Bible speak to you right now. I'm going to hold it up to the microphone here. I'm going to hold the Bible up to the microphone. Where's my microphone? It's on this side. So we'll hold it up. Let's listen to the Word of God speak to us. I don't hear anything, do you? I don't hear the Word speaking, do you? How... Are we going to hear the Word of God speak to us? 
through our lips, right? Through our lips. How can they hear without a preacher? Through the preacher's lips. We have to say it. Now, let me be quick to say, sometimes, yes, it's true. I can send a text message or an email and they're getting it from me written out. Yes, that's true. And, and what if you had someone who was incapable of speaking for whatever reason? Maybe they're, they had just had surgery on their throat and they weren't able to speak. But do you understand, it's talking about communicating the Word of God. It's communicating it. Whether you do it on a Facebook or a Instagram or a Twitter or however you can communicate it. it. It can communicate the Word. And one of the best things you can do is communicate it to yourself. Self-talk. Come on, you talk to yourself all the time. How many have ever missed your turn and it's cost you another five minutes because you're, you're now going to have to go around, make a U-turn or go down around and twist? How many have ever missed your turn on the interstate at 70 miles an hour and you now and you... And how many have ever said, you stupid idiot? Why do we say things like that? You dummy, what's wrong with you? You just missed your turn. You know. How many are thankful for Siri? Yeah. Siri doesn't yeah. say things like that. Yeah. I just programmed Siri today. Somehow, I don't know how, but Siri uh, got on my phone and got an Australian accent. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. And so I had to go in and reprogram and get her American accent back. I was having a hard time understanding her Australian accent. I kept thinking Jana Bowser had gotten into my phone, you know. So um, Siri, uh, how are you doing today? Let's see. This is dangerous. I don't know what she's going to say. Oh. I feel good. Yeah, she feels good, see? <laughs> One time I said, uh, Siri, will you marry me? Let's see what she says. I don't My know. end user licensing agreement does not cover marriage. <laughs> <laughs> How many are thankful when you miss your turn... Siri doesn't start talking to you and say, you stupid idiot, you've missed your turn. No, Siri says, recalculating. In 500 feet, make a U-turn. And she'll take you back and get you back on track to where you're supposed to be. Don't you know that the Holy Spirit is better than Siri? The Holy Spirit puts a GPS system down in you. You're not going to miss your destiny. Why does our sanctified, why can't our imagination get sanctified to listen to the Holy Spirit and know and understand He's going to make all things work together for our good? Why can't our sanctified imagination say, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. Plans to do you good. Plans to give you hope. You've, you, how many have ever heard the story of Joseph having been sold into slavery by his brothers, going to Potiphar's house, being sold as a slave, and then, and then going down in the prison? How many have heard the story of Joseph? And one of the interesting parts of that story is that you never hear Joseph complain about his situation. Now, I'm sure he did. Surely he did. But you don't hear it recorded. 
It's an interesting fact about that story. And even when his brothers finally come to him, that for sure demonstrates that God gave Joseph a love for his brothers. And he said, even for what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Now, Bible stories are written as an example to us of the character of God. They're written to us to learn from them. We learn what God likes. We learn what God hates. And God responded to Joseph. And Joseph teaches us how to respond to others. Brad was all excited uh, about this guy that was on Sid Roth the other day. How many watch Sid Roth? It's supernatural. And he had this man on there that had a vision, went into heaven for like six minutes or something. And anyway, one of the things that he learned was that we've been praying wrong about certain things. And he went to Japan and told the pastors in Japan, stop praying for Kim Young Sung Young Moon of North Korea. How do you say his name? Kim Kim Jung. I should ask Jamie how to say his name. Do you know? Oh, he's a different country. Okay, so Jamie doesn't know. All right. So, Dictator Kim, what does what President Trump call him? Rocket Man? He told the Japanese pastors, stop it. You're making God angry with you because you're praying for him to die. And they go, <gasps> he said, no. He said, the Bible says God's not willing that anybody perish. You need to pray for his salvation. Now, if he rejects the salvation, he will die. But don't you be on the other end of that situation. And I went, oh, my word. How many times have we prayed somebody out of a situation and we should be praying, God, have mercy on their souls. Open their eyes. God, send somebody to them to change their heart. Or God, fix this person or help this person. Rather than speaking destruction to them. Amen. That's why we have to use a sanctified imagination. Why can't we, when we're watching the news and somebody comes on the screen that we really don't like, and let us not even think about Senator Pelosi? Boy, I have to repent when that woman's on the screen. But I'm learning to say, Jesus, please help her open her eyes to see. God, put... put Put a servant girl in on her staff. Remember the story of Nahum, the famous military captain who gets leprosy? And it was a servant girl that said, Master, just do what the prophet says. You don't have anything to lose. Just do what the prophet says. And he gets his miracle because of a servant girl. Can we do that? Can we use a sanctified imagination and see it before it happens? All things are possible to the believer. You can have what your faith expects. Okay, let's go to our story for tonight. Mark chapter 5. This is the story of the woman with the issue of blood. This is what we concluded with on Sunday. 
uh, I think it's uh, slide number 24, Billy. In the Passion Translation, verse 27, the woman heard about Jesus' healing power. She heard about it. She just heard about it. When she heard about it, her sanctified imagination kicks in. And she said, you know what? I know I'm not supposed to be out there in the crowd. If I get caught, I'm in big trouble. But you know what? I've suffered for 12 years like this. If I can just touch him, if I can just touch, if I can just touch his clothes, if I, can, if I can just touch his clothes. Here, Vicky, stand up. Vicky, just use your, keep your little, what is that that you're wearing? That shawl? A cape? A cape. Uh, Dr. Simmons says that it's highly probable that Jesus was wearing, you know, the prayer shawl of the, of the tallit. Is that how you say it? The tallit? And, you know, the tallit has the little strings off the bottom, and that represents the Word of God. But regardless, she sees Jesus walking through the crowd, and she doesn't want to be seen, so she sees herself just going up and just touching his clothes. He, there's no way. Vicki cannot feel me touching her clothes. So she doesn't want to cause trouble. She doesn't want to be seen. If I can just, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Thank you, Vicki. She sees it with a sanctified imagination, all from hearing the stories about Jesus healing people all over the countryside. Now, how many of us have heard stories of healing or miracles of provision? How many have ever had a miracle of provision? Why is it that we get stressed out and we start thinking about all the things that can go wrong if he doesn't answer the prayer? We get sick and, oh, buddy, here we go. I got that stupid flu bug. Everybody's getting it. I'm 10, 14 days. Here we go. We all do it. Well, not everybody in the room. I mean, some of us are sanctified like Betty. She, Betty would never do that. But the rest of us. <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Where you wake up in the morning and your car doesn't start. Oh, man. I'm going to be late for work. The, the, I'm going to have to buy a whole new battery. Oh, dear Jesus, I don't have money for it. I mean, we just go down that road. And don't look at me with that tone of voice. We all do it. We, our brain goes down the negative. Take your hand, extend it out as far as you can, bring it in at an ever-increasing velocity, and smack your head and say, God, give me a sanctified imagination where I can see it because you can have what your faith expects. It just happened to me. It just happened to me. Last week, something terrible happened, and I'll be honest with you, my brain was thinking about Everything that can go wrong about that situation. And I had to force myself to shut my mouth. Zechariah was in the temple. An angel of the Lord appears to him and tells him he's going to have a son. And, and Zechariah has so much doubt the angel has to shut his mouth so he doesn't blow it. Do we need to just take our hand and put it over our mouth? God, please, come on, lay your hands on your head. God, please sanctify my imagination and let me think and dream about the Word of God becoming true and that I get what the Word of God says I have. I 
I am what the Word of God says I am. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Give me slide number 28, Billy. This is verse 34. Jesus said to her, Daughter, because you dared to believe, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Your faith has got your provision for you. Your faith has fixed that broken relationship. Your faith has got you that new car. Your faith has got you that new house. Your faith has got you that new job. Your faith. Now, why do I use material things? Because those material things are important to us. That's why they're heavy on our hearts. Come on, if you've got a car that you don't even know is going to start tonight when you go out in the parking lot to get you home, you need a new car. Come on. Billy was in a, in a little accident in his car, and so he's out looking for a new car. And I said, Billy, you're going to have a new car before 5 o'clock on Friday. Just stretch your hands towards Billy. Say, Lord, a new car before 5 o'clock on Friday. He, he has a little scooter that he rides. And, uh, and he, he, I don't even know if he saw me today. But I was headed to lunch. And Billy was headed to lunch. And he pulled right past me on that little scooter. And I almost started laughing because Billy's a pretty big boy. And he's on that little scooter. And I said, Jesus, he doesn't need to be riding that scooter. New car by Friday. Amen. New car by Friday. Amen. New car by Friday. How many are excited to find out what new car he's going to drive up into the parking lot Sunday morning? Now, what happens if he doesn't get the car? We believed for it. We trusted for it. It's up to God to provide it. We don't, it's no skin off of our nose, whatever that means. How many have ever heard that phrase? There's no skin off of my nose. The fact is, is how many times have we believed for the bad stuff to happen and it doesn't happen? Thank God. Thank God. Well, why can't we believe for the good stuff to happen? And daydream, sanctified daydream about that. Amen. Glory to God. I'm having fun up here tonight. Can we dare to believe God for the impossible? That's the hard part because think about it. In the, in the, in the natural, I mean, Pastor Jan and I, can I just tell you a little secret? This is just real personal. It's just us girls here right now. And it's just, just between me and you. Jan and I are in an 1,100 square foot apartment, and there's a long reason why it all happened and how it happened. Doesn't matter. What matters is I don't have my own sink. That matters. <laughs> That's what matters. And you ought to see Pastor Jan and I getting ready in the morning. No, you don't even want to see that. Don't even imagine that. But in the morning, we are on top of each other. I mean, she's got these curling irons and hair dryers and everything, and the cords are over on the left, and my stuff is on the left, and I'm trying to shave, and there's a cord going across my throat <laughs> like this. And, and this morning, I said, we've got to have a new house. And she says, by Friday. <laughs> but why not? And do you know what we did when we got in the car driving to church to work this morning? It's about an eight-minute drive, and in that eight minutes, we said, debt-free by Friday. I want a new house, debt-free. Amen. I want a new car, debt-free. And she even threw in, Lord, I want somebody to do the yard, do the pool, and clean the house, debt-free. That's what she said. She, I mean... She just went out there into never, never land, <laughs> into a possible land. All things, are possible. All things are possible 
to them that believe. Not to consume it upon our own lust. Do you understand? Jan and I have been blessed all of our life. We've had beautiful homes. But to have a new home debt-free by Friday, that's impossible in the natural. I mean, it normally takes 30 days just to do a closing, right? So how in the world can that happen? But why not just dream? Why not say, thank you, Lord, for a new house by Friday? What is it that you have a heart's desire for? Maybe it's a loved one that needs a miracle. Maybe it's a co-worker that you've been praying for. Come on. Maybe it's a bill that you, you just don't have the money to pay for it. And you came here tonight saying, God, you know, I need this bill paid by Friday. Can we not just dare to think big? That's what Bob Harrison taught us a few weeks ago. Remember Bob Harrison? He said, think big. Why not? Think big. Why not? Why not think big? Why not think big? How many know that sometimes a preacher preaches to himself? Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, you're helping us to change our thinking. Help us to catch ourselves when our brain starts going down the wrong path. Help us to put the Philippians 4, 8 thought filter on our brain that says if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Do you know I've had to talk to myself? I'm driving down the road in my car. My brain starts going where it shouldn't go. Start getting myself all upset about a situation. I've literally had to say, stop it. By the looks on some of your face. Faces, you've had to talk to yourself like that too. How many have ever had to look in, your, in the mirror and just say, you better stop that right now? The self-hatred or the depression or the, the junk that tries to come into your mind, laying there at night, thinking, too much thinking. Amen? Amen? How many are looking forward to a sanctified imagination? Lift your hands like lightning rods. Give it to them, Jesus. Sanctified imagination in Jesus' name. God bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody on the webcast in Jesus' name.